Oklahoma is making waves as a filmmaking community. Dave Morris here in the Oklahoma's Video Newsroom. Happy to be joined, uh, video uh, studio I should say, happy to be joined by Casey Twinter and Jeff Robinson, two uh, local movie producers. You may know them from Rudderless, and we have lots to talk about here. Guys, thanks so much for stopping in today. We appreciate it. Thanks Thank for having you, us. Uh, and let's start back with Rudderless. Uh, I guess I should back up and say the scent of uh, rain and lightning is what their newest project will be. But you guys were behind Rudderless, which when I think back to last year's movies that I saw, that was one of my favorite movies. I actually wasn't expecting that twist, <laughs> and you know the one I'm talking about. But the cool thing about that, and this will also be produced here in Oklahoma or shot, was seeing all the spots around town that in Rudderless, like, I know where that is, I know where that is, Lake Hefner. That, that was very cool, so congrats on Rudderless. Well, thank you very much. That's one of the kind of the fun things about hearing feedback is when people will start dissecting it. You know, they'll rent it and they'll kind of pause it and be like, oh, that's Lake Hefner. No, 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 that's some, and it, when they ask you about that, it's kind of cool. We love showing off the state. We think it's a beautiful state, so we feel very fortunate to be able to do that, yeah. You know, we were talking before the cameras rolled about Empire Slice Pizza and I ran to Chelsea Cope one night there. Uh, I just ran into Chelsea Cope there. And, uh, and of course, she was in Rudderless as, yes. as a musician, yeah. and it was she's just awesome. cool to see that. Yeah, yeah she's uh, we we met her through, and through Rudderless, and you know, maintain a friendship. She's so talented. There's so many talented people in Oklahoma, um, you know. So it's just great to be able to show off the talented actors, the talented musicians, um, the beautiful landscape. There's just so much. And uh, Rudderless took place in Oklahoma City. We referenced Tulsa reference uh, Edmund, we reference, you know, we just kind of are very transparent, this is where it's taking place, and um, we'll probably be doing the same thing in uh, Center Rain and Lightning. How'd you guys run into each other? He tells it better than I do. All right. Well, like all great writing partnerships, it began with fantasy football. <laughs> of course. Uh, so, no, we met in a fantasy football league at a fantasy draft, and, um, you know, uh, conversations about football gave way to conversations about uh, film and, and Jeff and I having a mutual appreciation and love of, of film and uh, Jeff had written a screenplay um, I think to uh, you know scratch an itch of something he'd always wanted to do and we began talking about that and it led into me trying one and and we we realized we were both uh, you know modestly talented at it and uh, decided to go for it, you know, making movies. Why screenplays? Why writing? Why not in front of a camera or shooting? I'm sure it's a mix of all of that, but why screenplays? I, I was talking to Rob about this earlier, Rob Christinger, um, that I've been writing since, I mean, I could write. I've been writing screenplays. I didn't know that they were screenplays. I'd write these stories and make movie posters. Uh, my dad bought me a Super 8 and my mom and I'd go in the backyard. And it was a typical, go out and make the little movies and stuff like that. Um, but I always liked storytelling, and it seemed like the most logical avenue to get into the film business was to find out if I had a real talent in writing. If I could get a story on the page that was intriguing to other people, then that might go into other things. Um, and quite frankly, I mean, I'd always wanted—I mean, I wanted to be Steven Spielberg, you know, when I was growing up, George Lucas, and all that. But uh, getting—that was a very. Uh, this is before iPhones and everything. You could just go in the backyard. Buying Final Draft software and getting a story down on, on, on a computer was, it seemed like something that was logical and reasonable to me. Um, and I did it for really for cathartic pur purposes. And it was Casey, and I always give him credit for this, that came along and said, well, let's sell these. And I said, ah, let's just go make them. I mean, I'll go rent some equipment. Let's go in our backyard. We'll film something. He's like, no, 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 no. We're going to sell something. He pounded the pavement, got rejected for three, four years uh, until we finally got a little bit of a break. If it hadn't been for Casey, I'm not sure we would be here right now. Um, I mean, I would probably have made some films, but they would have been shot for $500 in my backyard in the creek. What, pushed, kind of what pushed you? What was that entrepreneurial drive that said, hey, we can make some money out of this. We can make a living out of this. Or at least go into business on it. I don't know. Uh, stupidity. Stupidity. Lack yeah. of, no. Um, I, I, a lot of the things in my life go back to sports and competitiveness. And, you know, I think that I, I just believe in if you're going to do something, go all the way. If you're going to write a script that, you know, for it to see its come to fruition, it needs to be filmed, um, then, that, then that's what you do. And then you look at what's the highest level that you can achieve in that and go for that, you know. Um, I don't know. I, 
If I heard the story happened. correctly, Casey, uh, your wife was reading the book, The Scent of Rain and Lightning, which was um, came out a few years ago, while you guys were on a road trip. Is that the is, yeah, that, is actually, that the backstory on this? Yeah, actually, at the time we were living in Kansas City. Um, my wife's uh, mother lives in Weatherford, um, and I believe we were driving down to Weatherford, and it was she grabbed a book for the drive that she had heard about on NPR, and um, she was about halfway through it and was like, "You've got to find out about this. This would make such a good movie," and uh, I think I might have begun began reading it on the drive back, um, let my wife drive and started reading it, and uh, you very take, quickly knew it would be Give me that book, take the wheel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I say, I'm glad that you let her drive while you were reading it. That's really <laughs> nice. I know you, the so, thing. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Well, tell us about it. Walk us through a little bit of the synopsis of the book. Okay, well, so it is a, uh, it's a mystery, um, and it tells a story of a girl who is 20 years old. And she grew up in a small town, raised by her grandfather and her grandmother and her uncle, because when she was eight, her parents were killed. And um, it's a small ranching town in Oklahoma. In, in the book, it's actually Kansas, but... In, I believe it's Rose, in, Kansas or something. Rose, in Kansas in, in the book. Um, and our story, so that's basically the backdrop. Our story begins with her finding out that the person that she's always believed that had killed her parents is being released from prison and is moving back to the small town. His uh, sentence has been commuted because of issues with the evidence. And very quickly, everything she believed to be true in her entire life is turned on its ear and she doesn't know where the involvement is. That was this guy railroaded into going to jail some of the um, potential people who could have done it might even have been in her family. Um, so it really is this young woman just faced with these huge, huge um, issues, uh, all based on the killer uh, being released. The Scent of Rain and Lightning, it's written by Nancy Picard. Uh, at least I think I'm saying that last name right. You guys did an adaptation of that book for your screenplay how does that work? When you see our, our published work already, you're like, hey, I want to make that in the movie. What's the process there? I mean, I'm sure we, there's uh, legal steps you have to approach. Well, I'll let Casey get into it. I mean, he's the one that made the initial contact, but I think we, we were fortunate enough to, we got some meetings a few years ago, and we met with these, you know, production companies, and, and they were talking about how they'd option these books. And they get copies, they get advanced copies of them well before the public can see them. It's, I mean, People that do low-budget films like we do, really, it's, you don't have access to them. Um, Nancy's book was a, a perfect combination. I think it reached number 19 on the New York Times bestseller list. Yeah. Um, so it had a, it sold over 200,000 copies. So it had enough of a base um, that it was popular. It was based on a pre-existing property, which is all the rage. And, but it wasn't uh, so popular that we couldn't possibly afford it. And so I'm going to let Casey take over because, as Casey does, he just calls people. And I'll go Start ahead. picking up the phone? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, so I read the script, or I read the, read the novel, and I thought it was fantastic and really was passionate and was want, looking for something else to do. So I called the publisher um, and, you know, just was trying to inquire as to how to get a hold of uh, the author. I also, I think, contacted the author through her website as well. And she responded to me, and ironically, or perhaps not, maybe it was just my complete lack of, of, of seeing the, the, the forest through the trees. She was from Kansas City, and I was living in Kansas City. So it was, my wife probably had told me that, and I probably just, sure. you know. Your wife's like, I told you that. I told you she was from Overland Park. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, Fine, I, I got coffee shop meeting it is. Let's go. Yeah. So, so that's what it was. It was basically a, a conversation. I think I had lunch with her um, and said, hey, we have basically no money. Um, to option the script, and, and but we would love to adapt it. And if you would just let us take a stab at it, and if you like it, you know, may, perhaps we could work out a deal for the rights. So um, what, what did she say when she saw your adaptation of it? She has been so very supportive. Yeah. She, I, she, you know, she really um, likes it a lot, has been, you know, giving us little notes here and there, but not, not big notes. 
And we made some significant changes from the book. I mean, if you made a book into a film and just went straight from the book, you'd have a three hour, five hour film. You know, it's just insane. Um, so we had to make some pretty significant cuts to, this, to, uh, to the book. And then also, there are some things when you're in a person's mind that you can read. You know, like you're in, a, in a book, you can get into the character's mind and, and hear and see exactly what they're thinking. In a, in a film, you can't do that. So, especially in the mystery genre, um, you have to be able to physically show them going through the traps of trying to figure everything out. Um, whereas in a book, you don't. And so, you know, we had to make some adjustments for that. But Nicole, or Nicole, Nancy was uh, fantastic. Was this process going on about the same time Rudderless was wrapping up? It was before. And that was one of the things I was going to say. So I don't think we might have made the jogger. We had made a another film here, shot it in basically arcade. The jogger, a lot of it. yeah. yeah. Um, and I think maybe we had just finished that when you first contacted her. It might have even been before. We had nothing to our name, basically. Um, you know, uh, what relative, uh, whatever we have right now. It was nothing back then. So she took a huge chance. You know, on letting us do that, but I mean, at the same time, she wasn't paying us, we weren't paying her. We just hoped that we could do justice to the novel and that she would approve. And in case you said, everything from casting and, and keep in touch with her to the script, she's a, an unbelievable lady. She is such a doll. Um, and she's been really supportive of the whole process. I mean, there's not been, no, you got to keep this character, this has to be here. It's just, oh, I love it, and keep going. And I think she's a lot like us. She wants to see her. It's cool to see your work sure. on a screen, and I think she's really anxious to see her work live on a screen, and it's always very rewarding and fulfilling to see your work up there, yeah. We can wrap up this interview on this topic. Let's talk right. casting and where you guys are in the whole process right now. Sure. Uh, Micah Monroe uh, has signed on. She is relatively unknown probably by most. Right now she was in a movie called It Follows, which was a huge horror hit. It was had a really unique premise. And she's um, going to play your main character. She's going to play the main. She's, she was cast in uh, uh, Independence Day 2. Uh, she's going to be in a movie called The Fifth Wave. comes out in January. That's a young adult novel uh, series. And so she's, uh, she's on the verge, and she's extremely talented, beautiful. Maggie Grace, who was in Lost, um, also played Liam Neeson's daughter in the Taken movies. She's actually going to help us produce that too. And she's a those movies suck me in every time. Oh yeah, it's on they're just, yeah. For what it's, yeah, it's like, I can't pass them. I know. It's, it, yeah, and, and they're good. That's they make a lot of money. They're they're good. That's right. <laughs> and then we have a, a gentleman named Brad Carter, who's probably most known for. He had a small role, a small but significant role in True Detective season one. And you know he's been in the game for a while. And this guy, he's going to be in Black Mass with Johnny Depp coming out. Yep. I think in September, The Revenant. I think. Uh, is he in the Revenant also? I yeah, think I believe it's so. Yeah, with so this guy is—he's on the verge of making some serious noise, and we are very fortunate to have all of them. Right. Well, what's next? Filming starts. Filming, where you begin shooting. I believe it's October 25th, if all things uh, stay as planned, which in the film business rarely happens. So <laughs> around that, around that time, October 25th is when we begin shooting. Um, and right now, we're still developing. There's several characters. Uh, that we're still working to cast. Um, we're putting crew together and, uh, you know, uh, making sure there's a lot of these talented Oklahomans that are going to be behind the scenes that probably don't get the, the credit or the headlines, um, making sure that they are penciling in the time to, uh, to make this film because um, we don't want to lose them to other films. <laughs> uh, and I'd be, I think it'd, we'd both be remiss if we didn't mention that the fact that there's people that came before us that have established such an unbelievable crew base here um, has really helped Casey and me because they have set, you know, they paved the road for guys like Casey and me to come in and be able to do this because their, their reputations are outstanding. Very talented crew, um, filmmakers in Oklahoma, so we're very fortunate to be You're not that. outsourcing talent from Dallas or someplace else because you we try to do everything it. we can from Oklahoma yeah. as much as we can, yeah. yeah. I mean, with, with, the, with the rebate, um, which is pretty place. significant, right? It's it could significant be, yeah. rebate. It, it it definitely is very very competitive. With the rebate, um, the crew in Oklahoma continues to get better and better, and and um, there are still a few positions that there's not um, as many native Oklahomans that do them. Um, you know, but for the most part, if we can get an Oklahoman to do it, um, that's that's why we make the movies here is to make it with um, our neighbors and our friends. Very cool. Casey Twinter, Jeff Robinson, best of luck on the set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much for stopping in. Appreciate we appreciate it a lot.